What's up guys, Justin here from thesketchupessentials.com. Um, this week I'm gonna try something a little bit new. Um, so one of the things I've always been kind of interested in is uh, creating photorealistic renderings um, in SketchUp. So that's uh, basically using a software to apply light to the materials to make your models look more photorealistic. I'm sure you've seen some of those cool renderings online of like the outsides of buildings or the insides of spaces that are completely computer modeled. So I've, al I've always been really interested in this and uh, so I think for right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create at least one video a week, probably on Sunday mornings, uh, just teaching people how to create renderings in SketchUp. Generally, I'm going to try to do it with softwares that are more free, um, but things that are kind of easily accessible. Um, there are much higher end softwares out there, but I'm really trying to make it so that I can teach the basics to everybody. So I'm really excited about this. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is which software should you use? So I could spend hours talking about just this topic. Um, there's a forum talk topic over on Sketchication. It lists 44 different rendering softwares in the list just for SketchUp. And those can range in cost all the way from free to costing thousands of dollars. So, and I'll, you know, there's benefits, there's pluses and minuses to each one. Uh, most of them are really good at what they do. In this case though, what I'm gonna start teaching in is a software that everyone can download. Uh, it's called Twilight Render. Twilight Render is a software that allows you to create 3D um, renderings. Um, and you can see on their homepage, um, their website is twilightrender.com. Their homepage kind of shows you some examples and stuff like that. But um, the reason that I am picking Twilight Render to teach you how to render in is because the hobby version is free. It allows access to all the light and material settings. It doesn't limit your rendering size and it doesn't add a watermark to your rendering. So it's got all the basic tools so that everyone can download it, install it in SketchUp and learn how to create renderings. So in order to get the software, just go to uh, twilightrender.com, go over to downloads and click on this box that says the latest version right here. What that's going to do is that's going to give you their list of uh, different versions that are out right now. And they have a 64 bit and a 32 bit, and that's all going to kind of depend on the processor of your, of your computer. Generally, you're going to go with the 64 bit um, anymore. Some older computers may go with a 32 bit, but you're going to come in here and you're going to go to twilight render version two hobby. And you want to download the hobby version and the hobby version basically allows you to do just about anything that you want to do. Um, but it's not licensed for commercial use. There are some advanced tools that aren't included in the hobby version that you have to buy the professional version for. And if you want to see the difference, just go up to this about page and click hobby versus pro. But for right now, just download and install the hobby version. So when you click on that, it's going to download a file and just run the file to install the hobby version in SketchUp. So once you have that installed, let's go ahead and walk through our first rendering. Um, you should know if Twilight Render installed properly because it'll be in your extensions under Twilight Render. Um, I have version two installed right now. There's also a toolbar that you can open from view toolbars. Twilight Render version two, and that's gonna show up right here. So that's how you'll know if that's installed properly. So what I wanna do in this video, cause I don't want it to get super long, so I'm just gonna run you through a quick first render. And uh, we can uh, talk a little bit more about um, some of this stuff in depth in future videos, but I just wanna go ahead and get you started, get you through your first render, and uh, just get th through some basics. So you're gonna start off and you're just gonna need some kind of model in here. Um, I've modeled these six different spheres and I've just kind of stacked them up, and then I've got a face down here on the bottom. And one thing you kinda wanna make sure that you do is you wanna make sure that all your faces have the front face facing outward. So if this is this darker color, right click on it and click reverse faces so that all your faces are kind of this lighter color. Um, and basically the reason I have this face in here is so that there's something for this to cast a shadow on and then I've got these objects right here. So first thing we're going to do, um, it, once you've kind of modeled this stuff in here, is just go up to extensions, go to twilight render and just click render. And what that's going to do is that's going to pop up this box right here. And uh, I don't want to get too in depth on this right now, but basically this is your viewpoint for where your rendering is going to happen. So you can see when you look in here, you can adjust the size so you can make it a bigger image. You can adjust which scene. So if you have a list of different scenes in here, you can select one um, in order to, uh, in order to uh, render that particular scene. Um, some of this other stuff, I'm not really going to talk about too much right now, but 
the one thing I want to talk about right now is your render presets. So if you look in here, if you click on this drop down, there's a whole bunch of different render presets in here. And basically those are things that um, will do different things to your rendering. So one thing you need to notice about um, rendering software and rendering itself is it can be very processor intensive because basically what it does is it takes your model and it applies actual light and then it uses math to figure out what light would do on the different surfaces. And so it's very processor intensive, very processor involved. So some of the movies like Toy Story and stuff like that have this level of rendering and they had like thousands of computers working to render all the different scenes. Um, so, and that's just because of the uh, crazy amount of processing power required in order to do this. So for what we're doing right now though, we're just gonna start off with the low. So the low um, should work pretty good no matter what your, uh, what your computer speed is or anything like that. That just reduces the number of passes that it takes through this because it, it runs through this a lot of different times. And so low is just kind of a quick render that we're going to do in here. So just click this drop down, select low. And then all you're going to do from here is you're just going to come up here and you're going to click this green button right here. And you can see what that's going to do is that's going to create a rendering of your object. And so you can see what it does is it's taking the light in your mod or it's taking the light in SketchUp and it's applying it to these shapes. So you can see how you can see how the light is kind of being applied to this face, but then it's shadowed on the other side. You can see how this cast shadows on the base here and also how these other spheres cast shadows on top of it. So that's basically a rendering without any materials or anything like that, which is cool and it gives you kind of an idea what it's doing, but let's go a little bit further on this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some materials. Um, you can just close out of this and just say no, you don't want to save your image. Basically what I want to do now is I want to come in here and I want to add some materials to these different objects. And so what I'm going to do is just come in here with the materials section of SketchUp and just select a material. In this case, I'm going to pick this uh, bright red color. You can pick whatever color you want um, and just apply that color to the different spheres just like this. So now these are all kind of red instead of just having no material whatsoever. So now let's go up and just run another render. So come in here, same presets, everything else, just click the play button. So now what that's gonna have is instead of this being white, it's gonna be red. So it's taking that red material and applying the light to it. So that's our next step and that looks pretty cool. Um, that's, that's a great place to start. We're gonna do one more thing though. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna tell Twilight Render to do something different with these materials. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close out of this. And then you're gonna go up to your extension section right here and you're gonna select this material editor. You can also find that in the Twilight Render toolbar right here. Um, so this template materials open the material editor. And so you can see what that does is that pops up this window right here where you can select different materials. So you can either come in here and this will have a list of all the materials in your model. Um, so you can either come in here and do that, or you can use this eyedropper tool to select a color. So in this case, click on the eyedropper tool and then click on this red color right here. And you can see what this does is this tells you, okay, we have color A05, which is our red color's name selected in here right now. And uh, one thing you may wanna do, uh, unless you have a really slow computer, is you see where this red X is? Come down here and click on that. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna activate the preview pane of Twilight Render. And so what that does is that's showing you what the material is gonna look like with light applied to it. So it gives you a great preview of what this material is gonna look like. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a material template to this material. So to do that, all you do is come up here where it says templates and you can see how it has this big long list of templates in here for different materials. And basically what these do is these have different presets which adjust the way, the way that the light is affected by each one of the, or the way these materials are affected by light. So if I was to pick like metal, for example, like an aluminum, this is gonna adjust in just a second. And you can see how this you can see how this adjusted your preview to show what that aluminum color would look like. And you can see how it's kind of slow. It's still working through here to render all this stuff. Um, so even there, this is a little bit slow, but it gives you kind of a cool preview. It also gives you some other things like shininess and other stuff like that that you can adjust 
in order to work with your material. So what I want you to do is go up to templates, select glass, and just select common. So when you select common, this will update and you can see what this is going to do is it's going to take this material and it's going to apply it. It's going to say everywhere where you have this color A05, we want to apply the glass preset in here, which makes it kind of translucent. You can see how this is affecting the way the light works, everything like that. So you can see how that adjusts this right here. So once you've done that, you've basically told it everything that's this color in this model, treat it like it's glass. And so now that you've done that, you can close out of this and you can come up here and you can just click the render button again. So same thing we've done before. You're going to select the render button and then you're going to come in here and you're going to keep it on the low preset and just render it one more time. And so this will take a little bit longer generally because the light is more complex when you're dealing with a translucent material like this. But you can see what this did is it took that glass material and it said treat these spheres like they're made of glass. And so what that did is you can see how if you look in this sphere right here, there's a reflection of the other stack of spheres. Um, same thing kind of over here. The light is basically acting like it would if these were made of glass. So you can see how the light comes down from this corner and the colors are kind of placed on this face right here. And so that's that's basically how you create all your different renderings. You just, is you just come in here and you just adjust a whole bunch of different materials. And the one other thing I wanna point out real quick is right now, this is going off whatever your current view is. So if I was to come in here, for example, and adjust my view just like this, and then come back in here and render this again, it's going to adjust with my view. So you can see how my view is different now, my camera angle. So you can adjust the way that you're looking at this different stuff by doing that. Uh, that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Um, if you liked it, if you wanna see me do more videos like this, leave a comment below and let me know. I'm really excited about this whole rendering thing. I think it's gonna be great. I think there's not a lot of beginner stuff out there for this, so I'm really excited about it. But I'd love to hear what you think as well. If you like this video, remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Finally, if you really like what I'm doing, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Um, that just kind of helps me offset some of the costs and other things that come with creating a SketchUp content. Um, in any case, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.